Seems South Korea's crypto-savvy investors have a lot to look forward to from their incoming president. Welcome to The Daily Forecast, April 11th, 2022. I'm Justin Solomon of Forecast, covering all things blockchain. South Korea's president-elect, Yoon suk Yul still has nearly a month until he takes office, but that hasn't stopped him from getting to grips with keeping the promises he made during the election to advance the country's crypto industry. We'll take a look at that story, plus a whole lot more coming up. Now let's get you up to speed from Asia to the world. Join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. Kicking things off with another boost for the Middle East's status as a crypto hub. Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange, is solidifying its presence in the region. It has now received an in-principle approval from the Abu Dhabi Global Market, or ADGM, to operate as a virtual asset broker dealer. In a statement, the ADGM said that Binance will offer virtual asset investment and trading services across the Middle East and North Africa through its subsidiary. Just last month, Binance also obtained a license from the Central Bank of Bahrain. In an interview with Forecast last year, Binance co-founder and chief marketing officer He Yi said approvals could open up opportunities. Uh,因为我们在全球各个国家和地区去申请牌照，那在申请牌照的时候，他们就会聊说，那你的办公室在哪里？所以是在这个过程当中，我们开始去在各个国家和地区设置我们的办公室。那在这个过程当中，我们会
One expert told forecasts such moves could really benefit the country. IO라든가 STO라든가 어떤 기업 공개하는 방법이 여러 가지 다양한 부분으로 이루어진다 그러면 어떤 스타트업이라든가 이런 부분에 있어서 상당히 활성화가 이루어질 것으로 보이고요. 거기에 더 나가서 그 많은 일자리 창출과 많은 자본이 국내로 유입돼서 더 활성화될 것입니다. However, Huang warns it may take longer to allow initial exchange offerings. 증권형 토큰 발행하는 경우에는 우리나라의 그 자본시장법을 일부 개정을 해서 발급을 하면 되는 거거든요. 그러나 이제 ICO라든가 IO는 전체 기본법을 제정하지 않는 이상은 지금 발행하기 상당히 유용한 네, 그런 형태이기 때문에. The committee is also looking to dilute the oligopoly among local exchanges by granting more trading platforms the licenses they need to offer cash to crypto services. Those licenses are tied to strict information security and anti-money laundering requirements, and currently only four exchanges have one. They are Upbit, Bitthumb, CoinOne, and Corbit, who command over 95% of the local crypto market share between them. Meanwhile, Huang says that Yoon's plan to establish a government agency dedicated to crypto will benefit everyone. 그 디지털 자산 산업의 컨트롤 타워가 되는 역할을 하는 것입니다. 그리고 이 컨트롤 타워에서 디지털 자산 산업의 어떤 걸전한 발전과 그리고 투자자 보호 정책이 가장 중요하게 고려될 부분이 있고요. 그리고 주로 이제 수행하는 업무는 이제 어떤 부분이 있냐면 디지털 자산 산업 정책에 대한 기본 방향을 좀 설정하고요. 그리고 저 중장기 기본 계획을 수립한다든지. For forecast, I'm Danny Park. And finally, a warning for everyone. A hijacker is targeting verified accounts on Twitter, luring gullible victims with the promise of a fake Azuku NFT airdrop. Forecast Monica Ghosh has more on the scam. Online scams are everywhere, and this one involves a hacker targeting verified accounts on Twitter with large numbers of followers and luring victims with the promise of a fake Azuki non-fungible token or NFT airdrop. The latest attack happened on Sunday to India's University Grant Commission or UGC which has over 296,000 followers. The statutory body which coordinates and maintains standards of higher education across the South Asian country recovered its Twitter account after six hours. The attack follows a number of recent security breaches targeting prominent journalists and media personalities including Quanta magazine senior editor Emily Buter as well as the official Twitter accounts of one of India's chief ministers and the country's meteorological department. The still unidentified hacker took control of the verified account and changed the profile picture to Azuki related images as well as its bio to co-creator of the coin. The perpetrator used the lure of free Beans NFTs, which were airdropped to Azuki NFT holders last week. They then posted links to claim free NFTs, then asked users to connect their Ethereum wallet, thereby gaining access and then draining their NFTs from the wallet. Victims said the attacker used phishing emails to get access to the verified accounts. Forecasts have reached out to Azuki for comment and they had yet to respond at the time of recording. For Forecast, I am Monica Ghosh in Pune, India. And that's The Daily Forecast. And now, you don't need to search for us. The Daily Forecast is being delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up at forecast.news/newsletters. Thanks for watching. I'm Forecast Justin Solomon. Until next time.